Good morning, everyone. Isaiah 6, 8. Then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? I said, Here I am. Send me. Here is my testimony of how I became a part of this church called Orangewood Community Church. It all started with me sitting in a church and hearing the words, we will be opening a new sister campus on Orangewood. Please consider becoming part of that team. I thought, <laughs> yeah, right. Why move from where I'm comfortable at and have served in nursery for a few years and kids ministry for a few years? Why move from a place where I was baptized at 18 months old, grew up in learning about Jesus, had my two children and husband baptized in, and even got married at. Why? I was at a place where I felt myself and my children belonged. Boy, was I wrong. I started to hear a calling to be sent to Orangewood and see what this place was all about, seeing as though my two favorite ladies, who were deeply rooted in kids' ministry, left and went to. Pastor Kelly and Miss Darla are two of the three ladies who have watched my daughter grow up to be the wonderful, God-loving, young, almost 13-year-old she is today. I continue to still serve in kids' ministry where I was at, but the passion of why I was doing it started to fade away for some reason. I kept hearing God say, go, I'm sending you. Now's the time. I was still hesitant up until I saw how much fun my daughter had at the Wild West VBS camp at Orangewood and how much fun I had helping at that VBS. Once again, I heard that voice say, Go, I'm sending you. Now's the time. It was at that moment that I knew I had to make the move to Orangewood. It was not an easy decision, but I prayed about it for several months, as that would mean that I would no longer be attending church with my mom, who has been there my whole life, but also not be there with my nephews, Caden and Turk as they came to know about Jesus. It was a struggle, and I'll tell you, it really was a struggle. But I heard that call yet one more time. Go, I'm sending you, now's the time. So I listened to the calling and answered it by saying, here I am, send me. And so it happened. I made the switch to Orangewood. I'm fully immersed in kids ministry and have had that, and have that passion back for what I thought was gone to be with kids, and to help them get to know and love Jesus and all the wonderful things he has done. Not only is Orangewood my church, but to me, it's home. So today, we light the first candle of Advent and are reminded that not only did God send an angel, but he sends each one of us to do his work. Good morning, Orangewood. Good morning. Welcome to our first Advent at Orangewood Community Church. <laughs> Pastor Kelly and I have put together a series based on characters of Christmas. Now, for many of you, you probably think, sure. Characters of Christmas. We know the shepherds, and we know the wise men, and we know Mary and Joseph, and, and all of the usual suspects. <laughs> but we wanted to shake it up just a little bit and throw in some that we don't often talk too much about. So we decided to toss in the angel Gabriel and Elizabeth and Zachariah, as well as Mary and Joseph, and Jesus, of course. And even putting in Simeon and Anna. How many of you are familiar with those two? Good. 
And then we'll get to the wise men. This series, though, isn't just about the characters. But each of these characters, we believe, had a unique characteristic about them. And so what we decided was we were going to pull out that characteristic each week. And that would be the Advent Candle theme, as well as how do we take that characteristic and how does that apply to us today? And so today we begin with the angel Gabriel, and the characteristic for him is sent. Now, angels are known to be God's messengers. Not all of them, mind you. The archangel Michael was your considered to be the, the battle, the warrior angel. But the angel Gabriel, when he shows up, it's usually because he has a message from God. God is sending him. And so we want to be sure and recognize that just as the angel Gabriel is sent and has a message for God's people, we too are a sent people. But before we get there, I want to highlight the two circumstances in the book of Luke that bring about the angel Gabriel and his appearing. Now, it's interesting that when you talk about, or people talk about, seeing angels, I find it hard to believe because people say, you know, they, they had an encounter with an angel, but every time, and they, and they make this sound like, you know, oh, this encounter was just all warm and fuzzy. But yet when we look at the angel encounters in the Bible, it's not warm and fuzzy. It's filled with fear and trepidation. Oftentimes, people thought they were seeing God themselves. But it was an angel. And these angels, this angel in particular, Gabriel, came with a specific message to both Zechariah and to Mary. And interestingly enough, their response to Gabriel is strikingly different. We look at, and most of, of this series through Advent is based on the book of Luke, because Luke, being the doctor and great investigative reporter that he was, gives us all this detail. We'll bounce into Matthew, but most of the time we're spending is going to be in the book of Luke. And it's Luke where we begin today, right in chapter 1. And we look at John's birth being announced to Zechariah. Now, Zechariah was a priest, and he, of course, had his turn in the temple, in the Holy of Holies. Now, to understand, this is a once-in-a-lifetime type of opportunity for a priest. Because priests, of all the thousands of priests from the line of Aaron, the, the tribe of Levi, that, that served the temple, there was like 2,000 of them per month that served in the temple. And only one was chosen by lot to go into the Holy of Holies once a year. So the odds of someone Getting the opportunity to do this is great. And if you do get it, it will probably be only one time that you ever get to do this in your lifetime. So Zechariah has this opportunity to go into the Holy of Holies and burn incense on the altar, which represent the prayers of the people going up to God. And it is in this Holy of Holies that the angel Gabriel appears to Zechariah. Now another piece of this that has to be understood is, is that, and I hope I'm not infringing too much on Pastor Kelly's message for next week, <laughs> but Elizabeth and Zechariah had been praying for a child, but unfortunately Elizabeth was considered barren, couldn't have children, 
And so they were getting along in their years. Long in the tooth, some people might say. And so when the angel Gabriel appears and pronounces to Zechariah that he's going to have a son, it's really odd that his response isn't, thank God, finally our prayers are answered. His response is, we're too old to have kids. <laughs> and listen to what the angel Gabriel says. When Zacharias said this, the angel said, answered and said to him, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God and was sent to speak to you and bring you these glad tidings. But behold, you will be mute and not able to speak until the day these things take place, because you did not believe my words, which will be full, fulfilled in their own time. This is basically Gabriel saying, do you know who I am? Do you know who I work for? Do you know who sent me? Mic drop. <laughs> Here's Zechariah, a righteous, faithful guy, praying for years and years, he and his wife, for a child. And when it finally comes, when their prayers are finally answered, Zechariah's only response is, but we're too old. We can't do this. And so Gabriel says, you need a sign of who I am and who sent me? You're not going to speak for nine months. Think about that. Some of you might like it if your partner can speak for nine months, I'm sure. Then we have Gabriel, Gabriel appearing to Mary. So Gabriel's, Zachariah's response to Gabriel was one of disbelief, basically. I can't believe this is happening. God found them righteous. God found them to be faithful, and he rewarded them for that. But they couldn't believe it. On the other hand, we have Mary, a teenage girl living in a backwater town called Nazareth. And the angel Gabriel appears to her. Six months after. And it reads, Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and having come in, the angel said to her, Rejoice! Highly favored one, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. But when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and considered what manner of greeting this was. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom there will be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Highest will overshadow you. Therefore also, that the Holy One who is to be born will be called the Son of God, The angel Gabriel appears to Mary, sent by God also. The angel Gabriel, who stands in the very presence of God, brings this message to a woman who no one would have probably ever given even a second thought to. But God found grace and showed this woman grace and said, you are favored among women. Think about that. All the women in the world? And he picks this one woman and says,
says, you will give birth to the Son of the Most High. You have found favor with God. Wow. I wonder what she did. She was a teenager. She hadn't even lived that long. Maybe that's why. <laughs> she hadn't lived long enough to get into trouble yet. But he found favor. The angel Gabriel sent by God to this woman. And she received it. She was troubled by what the angel said. But she wasn't in disbelief. She didn't deny it. She accepted it. <laughs> Unlike Zechariah, Mary took the words of the angel Gabriel and kept them in her heart. Can you imagine carrying that information around with you? Not only through nine months of pregnancy, knowing that this kid is the son of the Most High, but the angel appeared and told her that she would be favored among women. Now, for us, how is it that we pray all the time to God for things? And then when God answers, we show disbelief. Or maybe we show disbelief before we're even asking. God may not answer your prayers the way you want them to be answered, but God answers prayers. When we're faithful and we believe that God will answer them, and if we're faithful in believing that God will answer them, and when we see how God has answered them, we thank him for that. Even if it isn't exactly how we thought it should be answered. Now it's difficult oftentimes to recognize how God answers our prayers. Because so many of us send our prayers up to God, right? Just like burning incense almost. The smoke goes up and it disappears. And we forget. We don't remember what it was that we prayed for exactly. Unless, of course, it's something that's really heavy on our hearts. Then we probably remember exactly what we were asking God for. But most of our prayers just kind of go up in smoke. So it's hard to really recognize when God has answered those prayers. But when we pray earnestly, and we believe that God will answer them. We don't need to respond in disbelief. We can respond in faithfulness like Mary. Mm -hmm. Now, what does this have to do with being sent? Well, the angel Gabriel was sent by God. And quite frankly, as Christ followers, we are a sent people. Jesus' command was, go, go into all the world and make disciples. Jesus' command wasn't, go to your house and sit and wait. Jesus' command wasn't, go to church and listen to somebody ramble on. It was, go into all the world. Go into all the world and make disciples, teaching them as I have taught you. We are a sent people. When we accept Christ into our hearts, we are a sent people. Do we gather as a, as a community of Christ followers? Absolutely. We do that for nourishment, for accountability, for encouragement. We need that. But ultimately, we are a sent people. We are sent out into the world to make a difference for Christ. To be a light. We aren't called to put a basket over our church. We are called 
to let that light shine. To let that light invade all of the dark places. Now you might say, but I'm old. Elizabeth and Zachariah said they were old too. But God wasn't finished with them yet. You might say, well, I'm too young. God was just getting started with Mary. In the life of a Christ follower, we are never too old and we are never too young. Amen. God uses us if we make ourselves available to him. If we allow ourselves to be sent, to be a sent people. Our mission here is to serve the world. Our world is kind of small right now, in more ways than one. But it doesn't mean that our world's going to be small forever. Each of us has our own little world. Each of us has people that we are in contact with. Maybe it's family members who that we're in close contact with. Do we really know where they stand in relationship to Jesus Christ? Even though they're a family member of ours? Mm -hmm. Have they said, yes, I believe in Jesus? But does their life show that they believe in Jesus? Do we know, even with the people closest to us, who Jesus is to them? How simple of a question just to ask. Not threatening. Not asking if they died today, would they be going to heaven or hell? That's always very intimidating. <laughs> but a simple question. Who is Jesus to you? Asking even loved ones that are close to us. Who is Jesus to you? And in the same way, maybe it's a coworker. Maybe it's somebody at school. Who knows? God, God brings people into our lives for a variety of reasons. Our circle of influence, they call it. Who's in that circle? Who do you keep bumping into? Who could you ask? Who is Jesus to you? And then listen honestly to their response and hear what they have to say. It may not necessarily be what you would expect. But I believe as a church, we are obligated to recognize that God is sending us. Yes, we gather here as a community of Christ followers. As I said, to be encouraged, to be nourished, to be held accountable. But we are also called to go, to go into all the world, to be sent. Because God is a sending God. Just look through the history, the Old Testament. How many people did he send? Isaiah, here I am, send me. Moses, sent. Noah, sent off in an ark. Abraham, sent away from all of his family to an unknown place. Very, very much ascending people. That's who we are. God wants to send you. And all you need to remember is you have the power of the Holy Spirit behind you. God is with you. You don't go it alone. And you have everybody in here behind you. Go. Right <laughs> now? Not yet. <laughs> Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you call us to be a sent people. 
You call us out. Just as you called out. Zechariah. You called him out from his disbelief. Just as you called out Mary. You send the angel Gabriel to be a messenger. And now you send us to be messengers to a world in need of a message that is getting lost in all the noise of everything that's going on. A message of hope, a message of joy, good news, as you call it. The kingdom of heaven is here. And as we celebrate this time of year, this, this Advent season, this time of preparation, I pray, God, that, that we would prepare our hearts during this time, that we would take this time during the month of December to really think about what you did in sending your son to earth as an innocent little baby, fragile, who would grow into a man who would be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Father, we continue to pray for folks in our midst that struggle with health issues and fear of COVID and loved ones who we know have contracted or been exposed to COVID. Lord, we pray that as the days continue and they get longer and longer with this pandemic, that we can find hope in the midst of all of this, that we can find peace, peace that you bring to us. Lord, we pray for those people during these holidays that feel lonely, even in the midst of this pandemic, where people are even more alone than ever. And we pray for them. And we pray for our church family, our family of Christ followers here, that they could be strong, that they could stand firm in their faith, that they can continue to encourage one another, to hold each other accountable, and that we can be that light in a dark place to those who need it. Amen. Amen. One of... Uh,